everyone. In our today's video, we are going to be discussing about the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system is a part of our body's immune system. Which means, lymphatic system is going to defend the pathogens which are going to be entering inside our body. Okay, So, lymphatic system is going to play a very important role in providing disease resistance to an individual. Okay, So, the lymphatic system consists of lymph, lymphatic vessels or it is also called as the lymph vessel and then we have the lymph nodes. So the lymphatic system is going to have all these things. Now first let's discuss about lymph. Okay. So what is this lymph? The word lymph was derived from Latin and lymph means water. Okay. So this lymph is the second most important circulating fluid which is there in our body. And the first important circulating fluid is the blood. Okay. This lymph is actually an extracellular fluid. So what is the meaning of extracellular? Extracellular means it is going to be present outside the cells. That is the reason why it is known as the extracellular fluid. Now let's see how this lymph is going to be formed. Now we have already discussed about capillaries. So when we were discussing about the blood vessels, there itself we have also discussed about the blood capillaries. So, the blood capillaries are made up of a single layer of endothelial cells. Okay. So, just consider that this is one capillary and it is made up of single layer of the endothelial cells. So, if you see the walls of the capillaries, the walls of the capillaries are actually porous. Porous meaning you can see the holes which are present in between the endothelial cells. Okay. And inside this capillary which is the tiny blood vessel, blood is going to be flowing. Okay. So what and all blood has? Blood consists of the blood plasma and the blood cells. So the blood is going to have the RBC. Then it will have the WBC. And it's going to have platelets. It is going to have some amount of proteins. So all these things are going to be there in the blood. Okay. Now, when the blood, so this is the capillary, right? Okay. Now, when the blood is passing inside this tiny blood vessel, what will happen is, from the porous walls, from the porous walls of the capillary, the blood plasma will start oozing out. Okay. So, the blood plasma is going to leak out. Okay. So, now here if you see, Small proteins which are present in the blood also can leak out from these holes which are present in the blood capillaries. But then RBC cannot leak out from this because RBC is quite large in size. Okay. And even WBCs like lymphocytes can also escape from these small gaps which are present in the walls of the capillaries. Okay. So when the blood is passing inside this tiny blood vessel, what will happen is through the small holes which are present in the walls of the blood capillaries, the blood plasma will start oozing out. Okay, so what is exactly oozing out? It is the blood plasma. Along with the blood plasma, some amount of proteins and then some WBCs like lymphocytes are also going to join and come along with it. But RBC will not come out because it is quite large in size. Alright, then what is going to happen to this lymph? So just consider that the, these are the cells which are there neighboring to the capillaries. Okay. So this lymph which is leaking out of the blood capillary will start to surround the cells which are present. Okay. So this is the reason why it is known as extracellular fluid. As you can see here the lymph is surrounding outside the cell. Okay. So, this is the lymph. Alright. So, now this lymph should not get accumulated in between the cells like this. So, if it is going to get accumulated in between the cells like this, it will lead to swelling. Okay. Now, what should happen? This lymph has to be collected. Okay. I told that it should not be 
getting accumulated. So what is the next step that has to happen? It has to get collected. So how is it going to be getting collected? It is going to be getting collected with the help of the lymph capillaries. The lymph capillaries will collect the extracellular fluid which is present in between the cells. Okay, And these lymph capillaries will join together to form a larger lymphatic vessel. All right. So what is the work of this lymph capillaries? It is to collect the extracellular fluid which is present in between the cells. And this lymph capillaries will unite to form one large lymphatic vessel. So what is this lymphatic vessels? Like how we have blood vessels. Same way we have the lymphatic vessels. The work of blood vessel is to carry blood. Similarly, the work of lymphatic vessel is going to be carrying lymph. It's as simple as that. So the lymph capillaries will take it to the lymphatic vessel. So this lymphatic vessels are connected, are interconnected with the lymph nodes. Okay. So now let's see what are lymph nodes. So I told that the lymphatic vessels are going to be connected with the lymph nodes. So what are these lymph nodes? The lymph nodes are small drought structures which are present in different parts of our body. They are present in our neck region, it is present in our groin, it is present in our armpits and it is present in various other parts of our body. Okay. So lymph nodes are small and oval structures or it could even be pear shaped structures. Okay. So now what is the main function of the lymph node? The main function of the lymph node is to filter the foreign particles. So when the lymph is flowing inside the lymphatic vessel, what might happen is sometimes there could be some bacteria or there could be some viruses which are entering into your body circulation. At that time, this bacteria or the viruses could have also entered into the lymphatic vessel along with the lymph. So when this lymph is circulating to different lymph nodes, this lymph nodes will filter the foreign particles and help your body to get immunity against that particular antigen. Okay. So what is the main work of the uh, lymph node here? The main function of the lymph node is to filter the harmful pathogens which are circulating in the lymph. So how is lymph node able to filter the antigen? The lymph node is able to filter the antigen because it has got... WBCs. So as I told you already. So as the lymph node has the WBC, it can fight against the disease causing pathogen which is entering inside your body. Okay. And when the lymph node is fighting against a pathogen, what will happen is the lymph node starts to get swollen. The lymph node will swell up. When the lymph node swells up, it is an early indication that there is some severe infection which is happening inside your body. Okay. So if there is going to be swelling of your lymph nodes in your neck region or your groin or your armpit areas, then it is very evident that or it's an early indication that there is some severe infection which is happening inside your body. Okay. And swelling of lymph nodes is known as lymph adenopathy. Now when does the lymph node swell? When it is overworking in order to fight against a pathogen, in that situation the lymph node will swell up and that is only known as lymph adenopathy. Now what is going to happen to this lymph? Now the lymph nodes have filtered the lymph. So what is going to happen to this lymph? Where is it going to go? So once the lymph node has filtered the lymph, then the lymphatic vessel will take the lymph. Okay, so the lymphatic vessel... The lymphatic vessel will take the lymph to the heart. So why should this lymphatic vessel take the lymph to the heart? So that again this lymphatic fluid will join back into the body circulation. Now let's take a look at the functions of the lymphatic system. So the first function of lymph is, lymph is going to transport oxygen as well as nutrients to the different parts of our body. So it transports oxygen and nutrients. The second important function of lymph is that lymph defends our body against pathogens. So how is the lymph able to defend the body against the pathogens? Because 
lymph consists of the WBC which is the lymphocyte. So with the help of the lymphocytes, the lymph will be able to fight against the pathogens which are entering into our body. The third important function of lymph is that lymph only carries the fats to different parts of our body. Okay, so how is the lymph going to carry the fatty acids to different parts of our body? Once the digestion is complete, in the small intestine, there are finger-like projections which are known as villi. So you must have studied about this in your 9th standard, so I hope you will remember all this. Okay, so in the small intestine, there are structures which are known as the villi. So this villi consists of blood capillaries. It consists of blood capillaries. So the blood capillaries which are present in the villi are going to be transporting glucose and amino acids. Okay, so the digested glucose and amino acids will be transported by the blood capillaries which are present in the villi. And the lacteals, the lacteals which are present in the villi will help in the transport of fatty acids. Okay, so the lacteals which are present in the villi is going to have the lymph. Okay, and that is how the lacteals will help in the transport of fatty acids to different parts of our body. So these are the important functions of the lymph. So I hope you understood about the lymphatic system. If you have any doubts, you can leave that in the comment section below. Thank you.